assuming that you're doing this injection, putting the barrel of your syringe in a corner of the mouth on the opposite side. There are other ways of doing it, but this is the traditional way of doing it. So if we go back to that diagram of the inferior alveolar nerve, exiting the brain in Seattle, Washington, running down along the Pacific coast and going back into bone in Los Angeles, the traditional inferior alveolar nerve block would be you boarding an airplane in Atlanta, Georgia, which has to be Delta Airlines since that's the only airline really that flies out of there. And you're flying from Atlanta, Georgia to Los Angeles. Essentially what you're doing is putting the barrel of your syringe in the corner of the mouth on the opposite side, Atlanta, Georgia, and you're going straight across the mouth to your injection site. So this is one nice way of sort of visualizing the traditional inferior alveolar nerve block. It doesn't give you everything. It doesn't give you anesthesia of the soft tissue in the buccal fold that is distal to the mental foramen. So once we finish doing the inferior alveolar nerve block, we then pull the syringe out using the same syringe, same needle. We have a little bit of anesthetic left in the cartridge and we insert the needle into the buccal fold, just distal and buccal to the last tooth in that, in that quadrant, usually the second or third molar. And we deposit the remaining content of the cartridge. And this will give you soft tissue anesthesia anterior to that injection site, down to the metal foramen. So in theory, giving the IA block and the buccal nerve block should give you profound anesthesia of the entire quadrant. Unfortunately, this injection is more painful than the inferior alveolar. Uh, you see where it says VAS. VAS stands for Visual Analog Scale. On a scale from 0 to 10, 0 being you felt absolutely nothing, 10 being the worst pain imaginable, this injection is 3, it varies, but th anything from 3 or lower is comfortable. Anything above 3 is increasingly more painful. And the problem with this injection is the moment your needle enters into the soft tissue, you're on periosteum, and periosteum is very sensitive. You can put topical on to make the needle puncture painless, but there's really no magic answer to making this injection painless because if you start injecting local anesthetic as soon as you enter the soft tissue, it leaks back out into the patient's mouth. And I've never seen a patient who said they really love the taste of anesthetics. They are a very bitter tasting local uh, drug. So you need to give this injection if you need soft tissue anesthesia distal to the mental foramen. So now we're going to show you video of the inferior alveolar nerve block followed by the long buckle. A finger is placed on the lingual aspect of the ramus and pulled anteriorly until the carotenoid notch is palpated. The carotenoid notch is the greatest concavity on the anterior border of the ramus. The barrel of the syringe is placed in the corner of the mouth on the opposite side. The needle tip touches the most posterior aspect of the pterygomandibular raphae. The needle tip is then moved half the distance toward the carotenoid notch and then half the distance back toward the raphae. This locates the injection site, which is three quarters of the distance from the carotenoid notch to the raffe. Needle is then inserted and advanced slowly until bone is contacted. The average depth of penetration is between 20 and 25 millimeters, which is two thirds to three quarters the length of a long dental needle. Once bone is contacted, aspiration is performed twice, and if negative, 1.5 to 1.8 mLs of local anesthetic is administered. The needle is withdrawn, the syringe is repositioned, and the needle reinserted in a mucobuccal fold distal to the last mandibular molar. 0.3 mLs of anesthetic is administered. All right, so once these two injections have been completed, what you should now do is seat the patient upright, comfortably upright. Now, there's an implication here. By saying you seat the patient upright after the injection is completed, I'm implying that your patient is lying down for the injection. And to me, that's very important. One of the subjects I also teach is medical emergencies. 
And the most common medical emergency seen in dentistry is fainting. Common garden variety fainting. Mr. Macho fainting. When? During an injection. Patient is seated upright, getting an injection. He's needle phobic, as many patients are. But being a macho dude, he's not going to tell you that. I'm going to take it like a man. And he white knuckles it. He holds on to the armrest of the chair. As that syringe comes up, you see his eyeballs roll up into his head. He's unconscious. How do you treat a fainted patient? You lay them down. You increase the blood flow to the brain. You take the patient. You put the chair supine, horizontal, with the feet elevated slightly. And the patient recovers consciousness within about 5 or 10 seconds. So how do you prevent fainting? You prevent fainting during injections by laying the patient down for the injection. That's the only reason I'm recommending that, is preventing the most common medical emergency we see in dentistry. So once this injection is done, or once these injections are done, the IA block and the, and the, and the buccal injection, sit the patient up comfortably. And what I have found in my experience, and I can't give you a scientific reason for this, but when I get called down to that clinic at USC, and the patient has gotten two or three injections from the student, two or three from the faculty member, and it's always, always, always the mandible. If that patient is still lying down, as they almost always are, I simply sit them up. I sit them up comfortably. I walk away for five or ten minutes, and I come back. And invariably, they're number. They may still not be numb enough for treatment, but they're number. So number one is positioning. And like I said, it seems to speed the onset of anesthesia. And also, it prevents the fainting when you lay the patient down for the injection. Not just for the IA, but for any injection you're giving in a patient. 